Hi, I'm Mary Windorf. I teach science here at Columbus Catholic in this beautiful laboratory. I would like to introduce you to a student of mine who's working on a chemical reaction. Hi, my name is Brennan Schneider and I'm a sophomore at Columbus Catholic High School. Today I'll be showing you an experiment where I mix zinc and hydrochloric acid, which will create a chemical reaction creating a flammable gas. The first step to this is to add the hydrochloric acid to the zinc. Using a pipette. You see you're using a pipette. This creates a chemical reaction which will create this gas, which we're going to capture with this stopper and put into test tubes. You want to test that one, Brennan? Yeah. No! What was that? <laughs> Can you explain to me what happened? Oh, sorry. What's happening here is the hydrogen gas is exploding. And that one I don't think he got enough of, but let's try the one he's collecting now. And it makes that barking sound. <laughs> awesome. Thank you very much. Hello, my name is Michael McClellan, and my lab is going to be spectral analysis. And spectral analysis is the analyzing of the emission spectrum of separate elements depending on, well, when we energize them. For instance, you see here, this is neon, this is neon gas. And so when you give them energy, you can see it glows a nice red color. But if we view it through a prism or a graded paper, uh, see through paper, uh, we can actually see the individual colors. If we had a sheet, it'd be easier to see, but for this one, we have a sort of a green to a yellow to an orange to a red. And they use these, this, they use spectral analysis for things like discovering what kind of elements are in a star. For instance, our sun is mainly composed of helium and hydrogen. And we actually got helium right here as well. This is more of a uh, yellow white. And uh, you can either use prisms to split up the light, or you can use the gray paper, like I said before. And it's kind of hard to see, but if you get the angle right, you can divide them up. And so, for instance, this is, goes to a little bit of red as a heavy yellow, a little bit of green and sort of a violet. Yeah, it's kind of hard to see through this. That's all I can think of. <laughs> all right, thank you. Uh, hello, my name is Joshua Schollen. I go to Columbus Catholic High School. I'm a junior and I'm chem to honors. My experiment is studying radiation. This is uranium acetate. All levels of radiation for have some health risks, but the level of radiation in the substances we are using is only dangerous if it is directly inhaled or ingested. So staying at a safe distance with a mask and not touching it too much is safe. And we use a Geiger counter to measure the levels of radiation that come off of it at different distances and through different shielding materials. We have a lot of different shielding materials, like we have wood, we have lead, and aluminum foil, and many other things that we put in between 
the guided counter and the material to see how effective they are. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Hi, I'm Luke Jansen. I'm in 11th grade and I'm in Chem 2 Honors. This is my distillation lab. Here's where we heat the substance to separate its different parts. It then goes into this tube as a gas, where when you turn the water on, it cools the gas so that you get a liquid as a result. We can record the temperature and the time it takes. There are also porcelain chips in here called boiling chips that distribute the heat around so that the glass doesn't bend. I'm Mark Fuerger. I'm a junior here at Columbus, and I'm a member of the Chemistry 2 Honors class. And I'm doing uh, paper chromatography. So in this uh, little vial or beaker, I have some acetone, and then on this sheet of paper, I have a line of printer ink. So when I place this into the acetone, as the acetone uh, draws up the paper, the ink will, uh, the different components of the ink will slowly separate out. So, just takes a while. How long does it take? Uh, like 10 to 15 minutes. Okay, thank you very much. All right, I'm Cole Timler. I'm from Columbus Catholic. I'm in the class of 2022 in Chemistry 2 Honors. And today we're going to be doing some electrolysis with different sports drinks. So I'm a big sports guy. So we took Gatorade, Propel, Bolt 24, and then Body Armor. Originally, I had been drinking a lot of Gatorade and Propel, but I found out that both of these have way more potassium and sodium, which are electrolytes. So I wanted to figure out if this was true. So what I did is I took different solutions from each of these, and then we tested them with this light bulb theory. So basically what happens is once we put the light bulb with this thing down into here, it'll light up the light bulb and you have different voltages of light bulbs. So basically this is the Gatorade solution. And as you can tell, it does have a lot of electrolytes in it. But as we start to take off different light bulbs and put on a higher voltage, you barely get a light. But the body armor solution is in fact way more powerful because of the amount of potassium that it stores, as you can see. What does that mean? So this that means it's a better... that when you're looking for electrolytes in sports to like refuel you, you're not gonna get as much as from Gatorade as you will from body armor. Because in body armor, there's 500 milligrams of potassium mm -hmm. compared to the like 270 milligrams of sodium that you get in here, plus the 80 milligrams of potassium. So you're getting almost twice the amount of electrolytes per body armor that you're getting from Gatorade. But the problem is the more Gatorade you drink, you're taking in so much sugar compared to body armor. Uh -huh. So that's it. Awesome, thank you.